So dad, we uh, wanted to just take a few minutes and just talk yeah. about your story. It's been an impactful story for lots of people, but for our family, just how God worked in your life from the very beginning. Right. So just tell us about your story and what you've learned of from your birth onward, how God was at work in your life and in your story. Well, I appreciate it, and I'm greatly honored that you and family want to have a history of what has happened in my life. I think at this time, I'll jump to the end and the most recent because it's been the most important, and you were vitally involved in that. And that was September the 20th. I was stricken with COVID, and really, before that, two weeks before that, I was coughing around, didn't have any idea I was really fighting COVID because mm. I didn't feel aches or pains in my body, just this coughing, coughing, coughing. And <clears throat> finally, we went down and got tested and test took two or three days, so they didn't want to put me in the hospital at that time and sent me home. But I thank you and Janice and Francis on Sunday realized I'm in bad shape. <laughs> so you hauled me down to the COVID hospital yeah, Janice and Mom did. That's right. Uh, you were not there with me. Not, not on that morning. I was. Just Some here. of the things that I'm recalling, I have blanks. It's mm -hmm. not just a senior moment. It might be I just wasn't in my you real were, conscious you, mind. You, you weren't know? fully present. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Not present in the moment. I was yeah. there physically, but. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Anyways, I got admitted to the hospital on the Sunday, and I stayed in the hospital for 54 days. That includes the rehab time that I had, but most of that time was in ICU. And uh, I just want to talk and share with you the great things God has done in my life. And certainly I want to communicate to you and to anyone who may be listening, the fact that I am a <clears throat> benefactor of God's grace, like I've never understood it before in my life. And because of God's grace and God's mercy, the story I'm going to tell you is a result of that. Mm. It's not that Garnet Pike is better than anybody else or has done anything other than what God had called him to do or called as a preacher or anything special. It's just that I'm a recipient of God's abundant grace in my life. Mm -hmm. And I know we talk about grace being saved, but grace is for a lifetime and everyone has received grace according to the word of god and so <clears throat> you have grace operating in your life maybe not in the same way that i've experienced it but i want you to understand that i'm very sympathetic if you think that uh, you have not received grace no you have received grace you are here at this moment at this time that you're listening to this you are a benefactor of god's abundant grace Amen. in your life Amen. and that's very important for us to understand and I'm also very sensitive to the fact that even though I came through and basically the doctor said I'm a miracle and I thank God for the miracle that I've experienced, I'm very sympathetic for those who have loved ones who did not make it. And I weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn as a result of that experience. And again, I want to communicate I'm not better than they are. It's just a fact that God's grace worked in my life and, and brought me out, and I am in a miracle and testimony of that amazing grace that he Amen. gave to me. Amen. And so with that background, when I went to the COVID and <clears throat> entered in the hospital, basically the first few days that I was there, I went through what I call the valley of the shadow of death. I have never experienced anything like that in my life. It was a, it's a time of terror. It's like watching one of those TV ads. I've never been to a horror movie, <laughs> but these TV ads for horror movies and wild animals floating around and attacking me and in the room with me and everything else. And I did not rest. And so I was in a room of horrors, basically, mm. which I knew was nothing more than the attack of the enemy. Mm. And in the middle of that, you know, I uh, came to the place where I recognize I'm at the valley of decision. I can either decide to go on and be with the Lord, and of course that's something better that the Bible talks about, Paul especially, 
or I can come back. And really what influenced my decision, and I can't put it all together, but I remember your daughter, Annalise, and Brooklyn were sort of standing on the bank and there was a gap of separation between us. And as they stood on the bank, they said to me, <clears throat> and like they were doing a duet in the chorus, we love you, Papa. And in that statement, there, you could detect such a longing for them to come back and be with them. Mm -hmm. And really, that was a traumatic point for me. Mm -hmm. Very dramatic. And so uh, with that plea that I felt and the call and the longing of their spirit and recognizing, you know, I don't, I'm not ready to go yet. I feel God has more for me to do. And that has been word spoken over me. I began to recognize I got to make a choice. And so I, I made a choice. I'm going to fight this thing. And uh, with God's grace and God's help, I'm going to come through and going to be victorious in the whole situation. And so that, in a nutshell, is my testimony. Mm -hmm. But out of that, uh, as I found out later in talking to the doctors and nurses, that when they saw me at the point of admission, they said to one another, this guy's not going to make it. Here I was, 83 years of age, mm -hmm. at the crisis point and the vulnerability of that age and that attack of COVID-19, <clears throat> they felt I was not going to make it because they looked at my outward appearance, mm -hmm. but they didn't recognize, and of course, I'm preaching a little bit here. That's okay. They didn't recognize the power that was in me. Amen. And in that power, I began to recognize, I've taught all my life, I got, <clears throat> like, you know, when you are saved, you have God born in you. And if that's the case, okay, I need to release the God in me Amen. To, to heal me and set me free. And he gave me the verse, Romans 8, 11, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is going to quicken my body. Mm -hmm. And I prayed that and, and prayed in the spirit over that and just hung on to that. And I shared it with my family and Francis and you and Janice and others uh, prayed that same prayer. And so I know that <clears throat> based on that scripture, well, as, as many others that I received, that God works through his word and he says he sends his word to bring healing. Mm -hmm. And I just believe I got a lot of scriptures there. Others got scriptures and you got scriptures that <clears throat> where we just had to stand on the word of God mm -hmm. and say that God's word is going to prevail here no matter what the enemy is going to do. Amen. The word of God is going to prevail. And so that's what happened that as we travailed and <clears throat> we saw changes in my life and the nurses began to get excited and saw the differences and uh, saw me getting out of the bed and sitting up in the ICU room and were amazed at how I was doing that. It was just a slow progression mm -hmm. from that point onward. But I think the thing that really is important as far as a life lesson is when you go through a crisis, it's time to stop mm -hmm. and ask God, what are you wanting to do? Mm -hmm. Why am I in this situation? And in my situation, and I think in the crisis of the whole coronavirus situation, God is trying to get our attention, not just us as individuals or as a family, but he's trying to get the attention of the body of Christ. Yeah. Mm. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. And you have not been listening to me, so... I'm going to use this virus that you're going to slow down. Mm -hmm. And I want you to have some time with me. Yeah. And set aside the busyness of the kitchen like a Martha mm -hmm. and become a marrier, Mary and just begin to worship me in the middle of the crisis. That's good. And in that middle of the crisis, <clears throat> basically, you will hear the voice of the Father speak to you. Mm -hmm. And when you get that word then, God turns around and says, okay, put me in remembrance of the word. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if I don't have a word, I have nothing to give him. Mm -hmm. 
But when you got a word yeah. and the word's alive in you and you begin to confess the word and pray the word, mm -hmm. then you're putting God in remembrance of the word. Mm -hmm. And out of that, then God acts through his word and the word prevails Amen. and accomplishes that for which it is said. Yeah, I think that ministered to us, you know, as your children for Janice and me and our families and, and uh, to other people, but in a personal way, just how you and mom you demonstrated in, in really what is, is, is one of the major crises of your life, you know, even though you're, yeah. you've lived a long time, but the way that you and mom responded was just to pray and to get into the scripture and find what, what promises and words from the scripture that God was breathing on yeah. for you. And that started with mom. But then the more you began to slowly improve, then you began to share with her what you felt the Lord saying to you. Yeah. And I thought for anybody that's going through a crisis, so many times we just get overwhelmed in our emotions. But you and mom had just lived your whole life by being in the word of God and always relying on it and, and listening for the voice of God, asking God, what are you doing? That that was your instinct, even though your life was literally hanging in the balance. Right. You just... You just relied on the Word of God, and I think all of us can learn just in any crisis that we're in that God wants to speak to us, and His words Amen. give us life and get us through. So. And you know, another important, important thing, and I say this, and I want everybody to hear it, but basically, when you have a family, mm -hmm. a family is important. Yeah. And when you have a family that know the Lord and can come into agreement with you as a parent or and other members of the family. I mean, I count my blessings all the time for the family that God has given to me. Yes, the godly wife and the praying wife that I have, the praying mother to you and to Janice and to the rest of the family as we pray for you daily. When you have that type of environment, you have something going for you that mm -hmm. a lot of people don't have. Yeah, And I think that that is very, very important that, you know, you teach your family to pray and you don't have to be religious and <clears throat> change your voice and, and just be natural and let them, your children, see you live out your faith before them. That's good. And then it becomes contagious and it's not a, something of coercion. Mm -hmm. You're not forced into it. You right. say, man, if it works for dad, it'll work for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're not supposed to go through things by ourselves. No. You know, and you're blessed with a family. Some people are blessed with a praying family. Some people don't have praying family. But that's why God gives everybody a family, a community of faith. Yeah, and amen. The church, church yeah. and the body of Christ, you know, because some people might say, well, I don't have the kind of family you have. But the Bible says God sets the solitary in families. That's right. So he gives us a family to get us through those kinds of moments of our life. Wow. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll do some more stories about just kind of earlier on in your life, but this is yeah. the most recent season that God's brought you through. He's That's been right. faithful to you. That's right. I was out there, and then I moved out of the ICU into the sort of the secondary department and finally to the rehab. I was there for two weeks. And God was with me all the way. And I must testify that God used me to pray for the yeah. people and bless them. and The nurses. And the nurses and the doctors and <clears throat> just all who attended to me. And I bless those who are on the front line, like those nurses and leaders and doctors and servants. That are, yeah. Even the people come in and clean you. Know, just bless them all. Yeah. Praise for them. God well, bless were, them. They were astonished at how you looked and your age when you came in. Yeah. And they didn't have a lot of hope. But before you left ICU, the one of your doctors, your main doctor, he, he gave you a report about a great statistic that you had become for him. Yeah, what was that? You remember? Yeah, I think so, but you go ahead. <laughs> he said you were the, the oldest patient that he'd ever had that had recovered from COVID. Yeah, I remember him telling me so that. That's a, good, that's a good record to break. And the nurses were standing there with him, and they were on shaking their heads and smiling, you know. Yeah, you know. Uh, they were happy. Yes, they were. Yeah. Well, it was God, a blessing. God, God was with me. He was with us. He was with us. Yeah. 
Well, we're grateful to you, Dad, and to your example and just the gift you are to our family. Well, thank you. I'm gifted. And we're glad God's given you more years added to your life to be with us for longer. Amen. So, Amen. Amen.